here he is, Mark Love. Hey, hey Steve, how are you? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm great. Great to see you. Good to see you too. And I'm I'm in getting ready to enjoy like 81 degree weather here in <laughs> Southern Cal. Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know I love you, man. So that's we can teach each other. But yeah, yeah. thank you for taking time to be with us. This is um I mean, I'm just absolutely amazed, even when we were testing this morning, just to, to see, you know, make sure all the tech stuff was working. And um, I appreciate you taking time. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. Um, yeah. First question, just kind of random. Is there a favorite symbol that you've been involved in designing? Or is that just like too many? It's like, okay, how many hours do we have, Steve? I, I was actually asked that question yesterday. Okay. And my answer was the last one we created, basically. Because <laughs> we, we put a lot of effort into the creation of a lot of products. And re just recently, we introduced, actually Tuesday, this week, we introduced the HHX Anthology. Oh, collection. I was reading about that. And it's, uh, you know, in collaboration with Jojo Mayer, one of the world's best drummers. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, picking your favorite symbol with doing what we do is like picking your favorite child. Like you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Oh, now you mentioned Jojo. Um, Mark, what is it like to work with like these, these super class drummers, you know, in creating new things? Um, you know, it's now what, what makes Jojo's uh, line different than others? Uh, well, first of all, Jojo, he's a very innovative player and an yeah. innovative thinker, and he's always thinking outside the lines, if you will. You know, a, a lot of drummers will come in with an idea, but they have no idea how to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. But Jojo thinks much deeper than that, and he's thinking about, you know, we've worked with Jojo for over 20 years on the Omni, on the Fierce, on the Hoop Crasher, on many different projects. So he knows the inner workings of Sabian. So he knows what lathing does, what hammering does. And he's much easier to work with than, than your typical drummer that comes in and maybe he doesn't have the knowledge of that. Ah. But, but it doesn't matter if you're just a guy off the street that's a, a drummer that wants to get a, you know, a custom cymbal built, or if you're Chad Smith or Jojo Mayer, you know, we treat you the same when you come in. And, you know, every drummer is important to us. In, you know, some have, have better ideas and, and uh, or more ideas and are more in-depth, but you know, we treat everybody the same. We're, so it's, uh, and a lot of ideas actually come from, you know, people that aren't well known. And Interesting. Maybe it's just a simple idea, but it's a piece of the puzzle that later on we put together and, and comes up, we come up with something very unique and interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, for, yeah one of these times, one of these days I want to get up and, and design, so, you know, get with you and design something because it, it's I've got a couple ideas but I'm not there yet but I remember I go back to what you were just saying the way you treat everybody I remember the first time I was there in Meductic I was actually in the area to do school assemblies and the committee that brought me in uh, said hey we're going to go to Sabian and we're going to get a drum set for you and at that point in time I had not been playing using Sabian cymbals and immediately fell in love with them just you know there's something about them there's a richness there's a uniqueness. Um, they're just an amazing symbol. So props to you guys for what you've done all these years. Yeah. Okay, um, research and development. What is that? What do you do? Basically, my job is to, to create new product, to create new ideas and new and interesting symbols, something that we already don't have. And at the same time, we have the responsibility of overseeing the quality. So any given day, we're on the floor working with the lathe the hammer, you know, making sure the things that we've already designed stay consistent and stay the way they're supposed to. So that's job number one. And then doing that also, we're working with artists and, and just coming up with ideas, you know, things that we, we try to stay ahead of the trends as much as mm -hmm. we can, although that's very hard to do because Trends are always moving and shifting, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough one. Now, we think with anthology, that's one symbol that we kind of got ahead of the trend. The sounds tr are moving back more towards traditional. Uh -huh. The last number of years, it's been dry and raw and dark, and, yeah. and we feel the shift a little bit. Still, those symbols are relevant, but we feel that the trend is moving a little bit back to more traditional sounding symbols. Hmm. 
That that has to be challenging, trying to stay ahead of the trend and yet uh, producing a, a solid quality. And, and I get this is, uh, I think I already know the answer to this, partly what I'm going to ask, but um, to develop a new symbol, each one takes a different length of time. It's not like saying, oh, we can develop one in a month. It might be a month, yeah. it might be six months, could be any, is that correct? Yeah, it's all oh, absolutely. Different. I mean, this latest project with JoJo is two years and through COVID, there was no visitation. Oh, so everything yeah. was done. Everything was done through video. Like we'd talk and we'd get a plan and we'd make some prototypes. And then I'd video them, send them to him. He's in Switzerland. And, and then when we thought we were close, we'd send him a batch. And then we would get together again and review and then tweak wow. it, and do it again. And so, you know, almost two years into this before we, you know, finally ended up where we wanted to be. So it's yeah. a lot of back and forth and a lot of R&D, a lot of inventory building, that, you know, but uh, it, you're learning all the time. Mm -hmm. A small change means a big thing, you know. Uh -huh. and these symbols are very labor extensive. Like there's a, they're hammered twice, they're laid twice. They're much different than most symbols we make. So, you know, it seems like to, to get new and innovative sounds, you have to go deeper and, put more effort into it now to, to come up with something that's very unique. But you know, it's great that, that you guys do that. You're willing to go deeper to, to create that sound, that unique sound, that innovative sound. Um, and as a player, as a drummer, you know, it, I, again, that's what I appreciate about Sabian. They're just, there, there's nothing like a Sabian and, um, it, it just, uh, um, you know, somebody just said that process shows that massive respect, um, you know, for what you guys are doing. So um, uh, we feel we make great instruments, but every every symbol company says that. So, yeah. <laughs> but I have to say, I've played others, you know, in the past, and there really is something unique about Sabian. It's yeah. not an, an average sound. Um, somebody just said the new line sounds great, Mark. Yeah. Um, the 18s are so smooth. So I'm going to have to check out the new line. I haven't had a chance. I saw it on, on the website, um, which, right. by the way, those of you want to check that out, uh, I believe it's Sabian.com. Am I correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. And yeah. there's check just out. so we've, much. We've actually redesigned our website recently, so it's got a bit of a new look, and it's very oh, well nice. Done. Good to yeah, I, I thought something looked different when I was on yesterday just checking some things out. And, and – uh, there's a lot of resources, and even for those of you that are not drummers, uh, first of all, we're sorry everybody can't be a drummer. No, uh, but if you're not a drummer, there's interviews on there uh, with with different uh, drummers, and and it's it's a cool site. And and as a drummer, you're gonna love that site. So check it out, Sabian.com, and you can always see all the new things that are happening. Um, you are gonna take us on a tour. Yes. Uh, so, um, and one of the places you're going to take us, I believe, is Area 51. Okay, now what is Area 51? I mean, we know the other Area 51. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's in, in our old factory. I, I'm not sure when you were here last if it was the new factory or the old factory, but in the old factory, we had a little room in the back, and we used to put all our symbols that didn't quite fit our lineup at that time or things we were working on for R&D. Yeah in this little back corner. And Andy Zildjian came in one day and he took a Sharpie and over the door, he wrote Area 51. <laughs> and, and ever since that, that's what it was called. So when we built the new factory, we actually built a room and, and we've got a sign actually, Randy, maybe you can run the camera here and go and just show that. We're in Area 51 right now, by the way, but Randy will oh, show okay. you this time. Ah, there. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> that's very cool. Actually, you know what? Thinking through things, I was I never went to the uh, never made it to the old factory. I my days as part of the Sabian fa family have been with the new factory. So, right. But so this is the catch-all room in a sense, and yeah, this um, is a room that we put all our specialty symbols in. I mean, we do a, a custom shop program, which has been suspended through COVID. We hoping to open that up again this year. Where you can go online and build your own symbol, you know, the size, the type, the oh, belt, nice. the, bathing, the hammering. And they, a lot of that product, maybe if somebody orders one, we may make two or three. 
and the extras all end up in here. And then anything we think of, but we think of it, Randy and I, we try it. So we're, you know, that's how you learn. So. Oh, that's cool. You know, do you ever find yourself waking up in the middle of the night going, I've got this idea for a new cymbal sound? All the time. <laughs> how do you capture that idea? Do you put it in your, in your phone or your tablet or? Well, you know, we, we joked here a little while ago and we said we need a notepad beside the bed because when you wake up you need to write it down because it may be gone in the morning but no absolutely i get ideas like that you know and and yeah. um, i've got my my phone right there but i think i'm just going to get a, a a regular you know standard notepad just because i can scribble something real quick and and i don't have to turn the screen on and all that so yeah so what just this is kind of a backdrop we have and a lot of these symbols you see on this wall is are one of a kind just things we been playing around with if you look at this symbol it, this was an ambient ride that we did for will calhoun but we've applied these deep pockets of hammering that interesting change, change, uh, change the acoustics or this symbol we call the shredder which hasn't come to market yet but it's got these notches on the edge so it's set it affects the sound because the sound reaches the edge at different intervals so it turns it into more of an effect oh that's cool and then we've got our complex which is a very popular series hhx complex just recently, Randy and I have been finding out that the arrow design on these make a tremendous effect, much different than our AAX. So huh. you know, there's a lot of cool symbols here and ideas. We've got the, what we call that, Randy, the complex-tagon. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we did for the rock gone many years ago. And just little things like jingles that sit on a symbol. When we punch the holes, you can do something with the, the holes to add an effect. Nice. And then graphic symbols. You know, we've been into graphics. You can see on the walls here, we have many different designs and we're still r and ding that. That's, uh, you know, people are into the cosmetics of a symbol as much as the sound sometimes. So is that the one we just, uh, would that be a good example of what we just saw back uh, that had different colors on the symbol that was on yes. the wall? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And this is like a, a carbon fiber look. And then we have you know, many different designs, you know, the, the, the music signs on that one and just different colors and there's no end to what you can do. Interesting. So an individual can contact you and say, I'd like to try to have this symbol made, give you some specs or whatever, give you some ideas, and then you'll, you'll tackle it. And once our custom shop opens up, but before that, if somebody wants a special symbol, every symbol in this room is for sale, basically. Huh. Our Tech program. You can go on and tell us the type of symbol, ride, crash, effects, hi hat, and some, a description. And then I'll come in here, or Randy and I will pick that symbol and we'll send them to you. And you get two weeks to try them out. If you like them, you keep them. If you don't, you send them back. So, you know, that's a good program. And it, you, you've had access to this room through that. Now, okay, question mark that we've got yeah. uh, from somebody who says, Does every prototype? we buy pass through area 51 your prototypes are awesome uh yes they would they would go through randy and i we would look after the building of these prototypes so everyone would come into this room and be part of this and you know follow the same process as everything else but it it's printed much differently it's printed as either sabian custom shop or sabian sound check hmm. but it's you know it takes a, a different route from our normal production Interesting. See, I did not realize that that uh, those symbols were for sale. Something new for me, right. um, which yeah. I'll have to to uh, give some thought to. It's. Uh, I got to tell you, this is getting this is getting dangerous for me, Mark, because I haven't I haven't gotten any new symbols for quite a while, like pre COVID. So I'm I'm starting to salivate. So I'm going to try to get yeah. myself under control so we continue to talk about yeah. this. We hear that a lot from many drummers. Now, Steve, if you if you'd like, I'd walk you through kind of the process of symbol making just in Yes, time. that yeah. would be awesome. So we've laid out just uh, from start to finish. Uh, we've got two alloys, are, and most of our symbols are made out of 80-20, which is 80% copper, 20% tin. And we have a foundry where we melt that at 700 pounds at a time. Oh. It's a, it's a family secret how they mix it. There's only mm -hmm. certain people that are sworn to secrecy that are allowed to even be in the room. And, and they mix the metal, pour it into castings, we call them castings, but into ingots. And that's, 
that's probably going to be like a 20 inch symbol this size and we make them different sizes depending on the size of symbol that we're trying to create so they pour them into these and then these would go into our big ovens we have big ovens about 15 feet square that run at uh, 1380 degrees fahrenheit and we heat these up red hot and then we pass them through a rolling mill and then back into the oven and we have to, and each time through the rolling mill they get a little thinner and longer and each time through we turn them 90 degrees so we're, we want to create a, uh, a round blank if you went in the same direction each time you would just get a long gated blank oh yeah yeah that makes sense you go in a different direction each time and that interweaves the grains of the metal and also adds strength to the to the product also so that would go to anywhere from seven to 12 or 13 times depending on the product and the thickness, like we roll them to an exact thousandth of an inch, depending on the model of symbol we're trying to create. So when it's finished being rolled, this is a small one, but it's uh, you get a blank that looks like this. Okay. And it's it's dark because the tin oxide melts at a lower temperature than the copper, so the mm -hmm. tin it comes to the surface. So it, they're black at this stage. So at this stage, this is like glass. If I threw that on the floor, it would probably crack and shatter. Whoa. Yeah, so, the, so the next step is pressing the bell. In. So back into the oven they go and heat them up red hot. And then we stamp the bell in. Now each, each model of symbol will have its own unique size bell. So it presses the bell in. And it also puts a little tiny hole in the center at the same time. So we, when we drill the hole, it's exactly centered. So the, the next step after the cupping is the, is the tempering. So they would put them in another oven and heat them up red hot. And then they throw them into a cold water bath and that quenches or anneals the metal. So now everything that's done after that is done cold. Up until that point, everything is done hot. So now it's softer, it softens the metal and it's now you can manipulate it. You can hammer it, you can press it, you can whatever you want to do, you can, you can do it without risk of cracking. And when you, when it's at this, this point in the process, then when you hammer it or press it or whatever, you're not ruining the, the, um, the form of it. You're just enhancing it and developing the sound. Yeah, exactly. Now this particular blank is a hand hammer blank. So we go through a bumping process where they flatten it out perfectly flat. And then as they hammer it, you can see one here that they hammered. Every time they hit it, it raises the metal. So mm. they hand that consistently until they build a profile exactly to what that model requires. So it, the more you hammer it, the more that rises and raises the profile and raises the pitch. Now with the profile, is, is that something that's measured or is that like a, you're eyeballing it kind of a thing? Well, both. They'll both eyeball it, but they also have a guide, a template. And it, for every symbol, we have a master symbol that we oh. try to emulate. So they have that in their hands also, and, they, and they're comparing all the time. And every, especially when it's a hand hammered symbol, there's like five guys and they all hit a little bit differently. So even though they're striving to achieve the exactly the same symbol, they vary a little bit just because of the different techniques. Some may hit harder than others yeah. and just variations, but overall- so really each symbol is each symbol is unique, even though it's part of a. It could be part of a series. There's yeah. still a uniqueness to each one. Yeah, they're like they're like fingerprints or snowflakes. Every one's a little bit different, but huh. but they're still within a certain parameter of sound. And then the lathing is the next step. Now this is a complex one. It has the raw bell, uh, but it's hand hammered, and then we apply another hammering, the HHX hammering, over the top of that. And and then also I want to mention. These are shavings that you cut off at the lathe. So yes. when, you're taking, when you're lathing that, you're removing shavings like this. And we remelt all that. That These are B20 shavings, so they're very hard. If you, They'll just disintegrate in your hands. Like they're huh. very, but we remelt re all that. Plus, when we circle the blanks, the outside edges are all cut up, and we remelt that. So there's no waste. Metal is expensive, and we save everything and remelt it and reuse it. You know, that that's amazing because that, uh, um, you know, people are so conscious, um, you know, about recycling, the climate, all that kind of stuff. Um, and 
that, I mean, that's a, I'm glad you reminded me about that because I remember being in the factory and in conversations you and I have had before. Um, now, when you take uh, shavings or pieces off a particular symbol, do you melt them and, and use them for the same kind of symbol again, or can you just use them for anything? Yeah, no, it would be whatever symbol we need at that time. I mean, every day the melting room would have a, uh, you know, a wish list. We need, you know, five pound castings or six and a quarter, or whatever the weight may be, and that's their target. Now they pour these by hand, so it's not exactly precise. They're very good at it, but there's a certain amount goes back in that we maybe we don't need that weight. Mm -hmm. We've got enough inventory of that certain casting. So we remelt those the next day and we just keep a cycle going. We don't want any more of that than we can help, but sure. But yeah, it's always, I mean, you could have a, it doesn't matter which symbol, it's the same alloy. So anything from an XSR, which is, which is our entry level cast all the way up to an artisan would come out of that same batch of metal. Mm. Just how you, manufactured after that that creates the different sounds. Oh, now we've got a question here. It says, um, is the uh, SR2 series still in production? And if so, will we see the complex series be adapted? Yeah, the SR2 was suspended at, at, when COVID started and we okay. haven't that back up yet. Now that was a refurbished program also where we took return symbols from trade shows and artist returns and we reworked them in a specific way that made them very unique. And then we sold them at a reduced price. Just okay. rather, than, rather than melting them down, there was still a lot of value there. All right. So that hasn't started up and there's no plans to start it up right away, but hopefully in the future we are able to. You know, that's another innovative touch, um, taking these symbols and saying they still have value and reworking them um, how, for example, how would you rework a particular symbol? Would uh, a, one that's not hand hammered be hammered a little or no, laid no, or? No hammering, no. We would just, we have a special uh, etching that we do to the surface and then we'd line over it with a lathe that makes mm -hmm. it a very unique appearance. And it, it, but it could be an artisan or it could be an AAX or an HHX. It's kind of like a treasure hunt when you went into a store and look at uh -huh. that's who you don't know. And we made it very simple. It's by size and thickness. It's either thin, medium, or heavy, or whatever size, anywhere from 8 inch to 22 inch. So it was very, you know, we didn't tell you it's a ride or crash or whatever. It's just the thickness and whatever fit your need. And you, it was for you to determine that. That's awesome. You know, it again, the, the innovation uh, just amazes me. And this is, it's, it's, I feel like I'm back. Well, I am at the factory, but back in that original, um, tour because I think my I was having like mental overload because I was trying to take in all of this and and yeah. this is a I, I think a lot um, a lot different than what most people would realize it's not just grabbing a piece of metal you know cutting a hole in it making a bell or whatever um, let me go back to a question we have here why are they returned to be fixed uh, they're not returned to be fixed necessarily but if if a drummer has been using them for a while and he wants to switch to other models, we would get those back as a credit. Or if they're at a trade show, then they're played on and they're not considered new. Uh -huh. So they would just come back. They're not, they're not fixed necessarily, but you know, we have ways that we can rebuff a symbol or clean it up. And you know, it's still a new symbol basically, but yeah, we, we don't sell them. Occasionally somebody will buy our booth, the symbols on a booth at a trade show, but not always. Sometimes they come back and we have to refurbish them. A lot of times it's a band and orchestral marching bands. You know, they use, ah, them. Okay. they use them for a season and they get pretty beat up. And then we get them back and maybe we edge them to a different size, hmm. the take the nicks out and we put that SR2 finish on them. And, you know, they're still great symbols. Oh yeah, no. It's now and and going back to I, I think you, if I heard you right, you said that those are sold at a reduced price. Yeah, yeah, and okay. I, it's it's a low end cast price. I I don't know if they're a little less or around like XSR pricing, but okay, don't hold okay. Me. Somebody's got another question. I can't see the first part of the sentence, but it says uh, that is thin, dry, and unlaid. That is similar to Zildjian's K Dark Dry. We need this. Okay. Yeah, we've got a lot of symbols here that are that are raw. I can step over here and kind of show you a few. 
like this symbol here is totally raw on the top side. Yeah. And laid on the bottom. It, it's, it was like uh, the Phoenix, the big and ugly that we did the program a few years ago where we had a collection of raw symbols. And mm -hmm. Of them here. I don't know how that sounds. Oh, that's a that's cool. Cool that's, sound. We've got a lot of a lot of different symbols like that. And then here's one here that's totally raw. Oh. And it's got the 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 oven, the brickwork on the bottom where it was in the oven. You can see that. Oh yeah. And it's quite thin. Oh yeah. Now somebody just asked about made a comment about more trashy. Can you create more trashy crashes? Uh, no, absolutely, and we have we have many of them, but uh, actually those complex ozones or sorry arrows that I showed are, are very mm. trashy. And depending on what you mean by trashy, too. Like, yeah, I don't know how this sounds through the that mic. Be nice. You know, typically when you think of trashy, you think of a Chinese type symbol. Right. But, you know, and then we have uh, over here, Randy, we have these that could be considered trashy a little bit. This is something new we're working on. It's a different hammer peen. Hmm. 22 inch, but. Oh, nice. You know, that could be considered kind of trashy too. Yeah, yeah. Now that's one thing I don't have, so I'll have to put that on my, my uh, list is I don't have a trashy crash. Now let me jump in for a, a second here, because something you and I talked about uh, just briefly when we were testing. Mm -hmm. um, you, at one point, I don't know if you're still doing it, but you created some symbols that were actually buried in the ground. They were, yeah. I think, called dirty symbols. Is that correct for a period of time? Well, they were, they were it was a program we called One of 100, and we the backstory on it, well, a lot of drummers over the years would take their symbols and they would bury them in their backyard or garden. And they said that it would change the sound. So no major symbol company had ever done that. So we said, hey, let's, let's try it. So we made a 21 inch artisan symbol and we built this special crate that was like five feet square and it had holes all through it and the Sabian logo cut out of this steel. And we, we filled that with this hundred symbols all on their edge and put dirt in and we buried it on my farm just up the road from here and we buried it like five feet under the surface and we left it there for eight months and then we dug them up and we brought them back and we it was kind of a marketing thing no one had ever done it and we sold them in these wooden boxes with like like the shavings and the straw that yeah yeah in them and and we sold those, you know, that way. And, you know, people say, well, what did it do to the sound? Yeah, that was my question. I, yeah, I mean, I use the analogy, if a jazz drummer has a, the same ride cymbal and he uses it for 20 or 30 years in a club and it's got exposed to fingerprints and smoke and things spilled on it and it fills those tone grooves and dries it out and it just, you know, becomes much different than it was when it was new. And I use that analogy to describe how these sound because they were covered in dirt and the water that would have ran through them. Right. And, and it did, and we didn't clean them up a lot. We got the dirt off them, of course, but we kind of left them natural as far as the way they looked. Mm -hmm. And we sold them that way just because nobody else had done it. But it was more marketing because I say that because anyone that bought one, we invited them to come visit the factory afterwards. Oh, nice. And when they were here, they had, they had their choice of any symbol free. So they got two symbols for the price of one, even though they paid more for the initial huh. one. But no, it was, you know, just something that nobody done, a major symbol company. And we said, well, hey, let's do it. And so it was something unique for sure. That, yeah, definitely. What, and, and the sound, was there any particular characteristic of that sound? Uh, I'd say just a little drier, a little more subdued, which in a ride symbol isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, more more just that. And, and, yeah. You know, just, it kind of aged them a bit. And everyone, most drummers know that time really enhances how symbols sound. Absolutely. 
yeah, whatever is there gets enhanced over time because the metal is hardening all the time. And we see that when we're testing symbols, when they're really fresh, they don't quite sound the way they're going to in even one day. It's a big change. Huh. But it keeps changing over time. They just, whatever's there is enhanced. Now, that doesn't mean a bad symbol gets good. <laughs> that means <laughs> it, <laughs> For sure. It, but if it's good, it gets really good over time. But if it's bad, that sometimes that those bad qualities or what we perceive as bad qualities are enhanced over time also. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm just sitting here, the, the, the curious mind, you know, who was the first, I mean, what would motivate a drummer to say, hmm, I think I'm going to bury a symbol in my, yeah. you know, the back of my farm and just see what happens. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's stories out there of doing a lot more than just burying them too, to symbols to, to see how it affects the sound. But, huh. and we see that, you know, people try things at home. I We've had quite a few people try to hand hammer a symbol at home and that doesn't always work out well, but, uh, or, you know, just different things. And, you yeah, know, yeah. But it's, you know, people are creative and it's, it's great to be creative. It is, no, it really is. It, it's, it's fascinating, you know, it, just every piece of this, um, now, somebody, we have another question. Let me jump in with that. It says, will there be more product other than the anthology this year? New product, I'm assuming. Uh, we're working on a few things. I mean, we have uh, something planned for our 40th anniversary. This is our 40th year, so we're, we're looking at a symbol for that. And we've got a few little effects that we're looking at launching periodically throughout the year. Hmm. And, and then we've also got a this isn't for 100% for sure, but a Black Friday symbol that we're working on for, for later in the year, just something unique, like a concept symbol. So, and we're certainly, we're already working into 2023 for new product, but we have to be ahead wow. of the curve a little bit to, to be ready. So we've got a lot of ideas. We've got our R&D team, if you will. There's a, eight of us, I believe, on it, plus anyone in the factory that has ideas, we're more than willing to listen. You know, it... It, what a cool place to work because the creativity is at such a high level. You've got teams, you're always working on something. I want to try to go back and recapture a question here, something about uh, Terry Bozio. Uh, there's a story about him uh, hammering or, or doing something to his own symbols. And oh, yeah. um, that, yeah, that did that not work um, out at all? Or, uh, you know, something that just sounded terrible, it says. <laughs> Well, Terry Bozio was one of a kind. Anyone that knows Terry Bozio, oh, he's, he's like amazing. a one man, one man orchestra. Yeah, back, yeah. I believe it was 96, not 100% sure on the year, but we created a series called Radia. And they were made much different than any other symbol. He came to us with a drawing on a piece of paper. And instead of lathing a symbol on a lathe, he wanted to be etched from the edge to the center. Oh. So the only way we could do that was by hand. We took the lathing the carbide lathing knives, and we would put a ring on the outside and a, and a small cup bolted in the middle, and we would etch that tin oxide off by hand. And we spent a solid week creating this. This whole He placed 50 symbols on his kit at once, so <laughs> basically shut the factory down for a week to replicate. We made 20 of each of those, so there's a 1,000 symbols. And then we had to etch them all by hand, and I remember it well because – he was here with his tech, Wayne Wilbur, and he brought his full giant drum set. And we had cymbals playing all over the vault everywhere, and we were matching them up. And and we would scratch them by hand, but it was a slow process. It took about an hour to do one cymbal. Oh, yeah. And we had a, a long weekend coming up. I don't know if it was Easter, or, and and we were Friday, and we were getting pretty tired. And, and he said, you know, we're so close, I'm going to stay another week. So we spent the whole weekend, all of us in here, scratching those, and then all the next week, and we created, we had a full set, and I remember he set up in the vault and had all the employees come in, and he played for everybody in the, in the, in the vault. And that was a series for a number of years, the radio, and we yes, still saw them remember a couple that. times and the bells, and occasionally somebody will request like a 20 or some of the larger sizes, but uh, that was, uh, and, you know, going back to that we weren't afraid to, to take that on, you know, that probably wasn't the smartest market wise, but mm -hmm. we, we were very innovative and we, we would try anything. You know, we did a lot of things like that and you know, it, you learn things while you're doing that also. So it, it helps in the creativity. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it helps with the big picture. It, I remember yeah. the first uh, clinic I went to of Terry's. Yeah. I didn't know whether to, you know, um, go home and throw my drumsticks away or cry. Or <laughs> He's so amazing. I mean, when he can set yeah. patterns with his feet, you know, and then change his hands to his feet. And yeah, yeah. I mean, he is, he is brilliant. He is just absolutely amazing. It's now I got to go back to another question. We've got a couple of them. One is why the new logo? It's not cute. Yeah. Well, it depends on your perspective. I mean, we, <laughs> yeah. we rebranded and we changed a lot of things and without changing the logo, people wouldn't recognize that. And thinking way back, Bob Zildian, he talked about changing the logo 20 years ago. Huh. I mean, over time, we just thought it was time to get a, a little bit more modern look. Now, some drummers hate it. Some love it. But, you know, it is what it is. And we still love the old logo, too. But the new logo sure. is here to stay. So, you know, And you don't really use the old logo anymore. Am I correct? It's the new uh, one on everything. No, there's still a few symbols around. I'm, I'm sure stores have lots of them with the old logo still. And... Typically, we everything is a new logo now. I mean, mm. even our software, you know, and some things we're incorporating now is the rings on a symbol. Uh, I'll grab one here. That's, uh, feels like part of that Sabian logo is just the rings. And this, oh yeah. So that's something that signifies. It's kind of cool. like our our Nike swoosh. Yeah, <laughs> that that's they very cool. It doesn't have to say Sabian. It can just show the rings, and people recognize that. Yeah. So that may be something we incorporate more and more because part of the rings here. No, I like that. I like what the, because that is, you know, it's like the Nike swish, like you said, that's, yeah. you see that and say Sabian, you know, and that's, that's all part of branding. Yeah. Um, somebody just said uh, kind of resembles the old logo in a bit, which it does. Well, it has the rings like, the yeah, it's got those rings, you know, so, yeah. and, I think again the innovation, you know, and somebody just said, "Love the idea." Um, let's go back to something you and I. Um, somebody said that's a nice one. You and I talked about again as we were testing earlier today because we haven't had a chance without Nam. We haven't had a chance to, to catch up, and this is great. But you've been with Sabian uh, almost your whole working life, and and you mentioned that there are uh, people, you know, at the factory been there twenty years. 30 years, uh, you know, I don't know. Has somebody been there 40 years since the beginning? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm in my 42nd year. Okay. I'm, I'm not the longest serving. Uh, uh, Lewis Furrow, who just, he said he retired, but he comes every day. So I don't think. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but he's, he's in his 47th year. Wow. So, and then Nort, you remember Nort? Yep. Nort was here 45. Blair Davison just recently retired. He was here, I believe, 43. Amazing. Uh, and we've got a lot. Well, Peter Stairs is 40 years, you know, Peter. And yep. there's a lot of employees that are 20, 30 plus years. Charlie yeah. Brown, he's here almost 40. He does a lot of our hand hammering. Like, there's a lot of long-term employees. Now, that I don't think that's common today. People it isn't. A lot more, but we used to joke about it here, said if you're here – for five years, you're a lifer after that. Now, that isn't always the case. But. <laughs> Somebody just made a comment and said, what a legend. And here's another one that just popped up. Sabian is the best, which I would agree. Um, you made a comment when we were talking about this before that, obviously, you just said it. It is That's not very common. But yet, maybe it could be. You said something to me that that is super important, and that is, when you find something you like and you enjoy, stick with it. I, I often, when I do speak at school assemblies, and, and I'll tell students, I say, hey, don't, don't try to find a job. Do what you're passionate about, you know. And some people have said, then you'll never work a day in your life. But yeah. when you're, you're passionate about I mean, that's why I'm sure that's why, of one of many reasons why all of you, you know, many of you have been there so many years. And I know I appreciate when I, when I see you in person and it's like, you take me on this tour at the NAMM show and here's this one new one and this one, and you'll like this one. And I mean, it's, it's, you, you sense that enthusiasm, that passion in you. Yeah. And I know the others that some of the others that I know at the factory. Yeah. And we, you know, we say it to ourselves jokingly, but, they pay us to do this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
that I mean, there's a lot of hard work that goes on here too. But sure, you know, and we're kind of lucky in a way doing what we do, Randy and I. But we're creative and we have access to everything on the factory floor plus in here. So we're kind of free to do what we like. But we, at the end of the day, we have to be creative and and create instruments that are new and unique and you know make the company profitable too. See what a what a cool place to be, you know, in in your life, in your career, and 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 like you said, they pay us to do this. I mean, that's amazing. You you know, you've got this this very cool purpose that really affects a lot of different people because all of us that are that are part of the Sabian family, you're enabling us to do what we do and and provide a, not just a quality product but um, something that. Uh, you know, that, that changes lives. I mean, we're big about that with you talking, you know, be the change, go out right. and change the world. And Sabian is changing the world through the product that you're producing. Um, I missed a couple of questions. I'm going to jump and grab this one. It says, are you able to ship around the world? I believe so. Oh yeah. We, we shipped over 80 countries around the world and, you know, international shipping is a big part of our business. I mean, mm. we deal with the big, you know, North American dealers, the Guitar Centers, the Sweetwaters. Sure. Canada, Long and McQuaid is a big distributor. There's a lot, you know, a lot of small independents also. But now we ship all over the world. And that's, and there's some challenges to that recently with, you know, containers. And oh, getting, yeah. All that. I mean, things are kind of backlogged with COVID and it's still catching up. But no, we're very active internationally, you know, and a lot of competition too internationally. But no, we we do well there. Maybe we need a new shirt that says "Change the World, Play Sabian." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. or just Sabian change the changing the world. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Steve, thing that's interesting too, and you, all drummers are they want to be unique and different. Yep. Yeah. So there's they're not every drummer has typically has a unique setup, and they want to be different than everybody else. They want to sound different. They want Absolutely. to look different. So. That's why we create thousands of different sounds and different models is because everybody wants their sound. And that's our tagline, kind of play your way, kind of, you know, we want to create instruments where everybody can be unique, have their, a unique sound, a unique playing style. And, you know, we want everyone to enjoy the product and, and, and sound great out there. Well, you guys are the best, definitely. You know, I'm I'm always bragging about being part of the Sabian family and trying to convince other drummers, you know, this is what you need to move to. And, of course, my students, you know. Um, and that's one thing that – another thing I appreciate about Sabian is there is a line for younger players that's a, a bit less expensive – um, and yet it, the quality is there. I mean, it, 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 the, that quality of that, those other symbols is still every bit as good as the top of the line, which is great that you guys have done that. And of course, I, I love that with my students because it's like, this is a symbol you need to get, you know, right. um, yeah. in my yeah. opinion, but, but I think that's what it is. All right. So, yeah, it, uh, Mark, once again, Sabian website is Sabian, S-A-B-I-A-N dot com. We'll put it in the notes of the show. And social media, how do we follow uh, Sabian on social media? Well, we have a Facebook page, a YouTube page, Instagram. Randy, you can even comment on that. You probably know that better than I do. Yeah, there's uh, Sabian Symbols is the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Sabian Official on Instagram. Uh, and it's just Sabian on Facebook. Yeah. I'll also, uh, if you guys are curious about Area 51, I see in the comments a lot of people are really jazzed over this. Uh, I invite you to go to our YouTube channel and check out a series that Mark and I started called Raid the Vault. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. We will, we will try to put, make sure all these notes are in the notes for the show. I appreciate you guys. I, I, uh, I guess we're going to have to bring our conversation to an end at this point, but we are going to have to do this again. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. Maybe sometime we could set it up so we could actually walk through the factory and actually see some of the manufacturing. But uh, we'd love to love to do this again at some point. Yeah, no, definitely. And and this is kind of a spoiler alert, but Utah is launching a TV show. And uh, that might be a good thing to do, you know, where we could set it up or or maybe that I can make a trip up and, and we can walk through together, whatever. But definitely yeah. – um, 
you know, we, we definitely got to do that. And, and uh, we'll, we'll do this again. I appreciate you guys so much. And it's, it's great to see you. And, and Randy, thanks for your help. And uh, greet all my other friends at Sabian. And uh, we'll be in touch. Okay, Steve, thank you very much. You're welcome, Mark. Thank you. And thanks to Randy. <laughs>